Good afternoon on the 8th of April. Yeah, 8th of April 23. I'm down in B&M, as you can probably see from the sign over there. And uh, it's the second time this has happened today, actually. I was out for coffee at Glentillet Distillery. I was a millionth customer. Um, one millionth customer, and she says, you get a free coffee. I says, what for? I says, because you're the millionth customer that's come through the door and ordered coffee. I says, great. And um, so I was at the checkout the other day and the, the thing buzzed off. Yeah, I was getting condition milk again. Seems to go through a hell of a lot of it now. Um, the buzzer went, I thought it was a shoplifting buzzer for me. Uh, I didn't have anything in my back pockets because, uh, well, the only other thing I bought was these because they were a pound. And I haven't had any sweets for ages so I thought I'd stick them in the car just for... If I try and stop smoking. But anyway, um, so I said, what's all the commotion? Why, what's that buzzer for? She's just a second, Dandy, just a second. And the manager came down, turned down. And when he saw me, his face dropped a little bit. Um, but um, he came over and he says, oh, congratulations, uh, you're one millionth customer. I says, what, in, in the whole of B&M's history? He says, no, don't be facetious. He says, uh, in the Creef store, you're the, it's the millionth purchase that's been made at, at the centre. It ring, rings off. I says, well, that's uh, pretty good. And he says, what are you buying? I says, um, just a carnation milk and some sweets. We'll just take them free of charge. And he says, if you want to have a... I grab of the trolley and have a whish round and grab anything you need, you need or want. You, you're welcome. It's a free shop for the millionth customer. I says, no thanks. Just a load of shite in the shop. That's all I need. So he kind of looked at me with his usual fraught way, kind of up and down kind of style look. And uh, he buggered off. But uh, there was no fanfare. It was just a case of that was it. But imagine getting that twice in the one day. I zipped through to Bertha this morning. I was in Bertha. I didn't stop for any photography. And uh, because of these uh, chaotic roadworks and traffic jams in the Creef Roadside, I zipped up to Broxburn and uh, down the carriageway. But that was just as slow. That was... Uh, well, Bertha was very quiet. Uh, well, fairly quiet. And, uh, and I thought to myself, I mean, they can't all be away for Easter, they can't afford to get away for Easter, so I don't know what the problem is with them. As I've probably said a hundred times, it's probably is people don't want to go down there and get zapped with the low vibrationals. But, um, so I've come down here, I was very pleasant, I was just chatting to somebody that uh, I know fairly well from um, my days at Albright School, and uh, so I had a bit of a, a chin wag, and uh, he's always, always very nice to have a a blur with that chap, he's, he's always very, very polite. Of course he would be. Uh, I think the education uh, helps that way. Although in saying so, he'd, um, you know, he, he's not this kind of chap that looks down on anyone. I know his father and mother very well too. Well, his father more than his mother actually, but uh, yes, very nice people. Anyway, I think what we'll do, I'm going out to get a car wash on this Nissan. I'm going to give it a little... Easter clean-up, so I shall zip out uh, the roads and I'll be back soon. So I've just stopped off at the Glen Turret Distillery for coffee. I came out again and uh, I was hoping they would sell a million copies between the time I was out earlier today and my, well, my revisit here at uh, 25 to 4. This seems to be the new time for my clock. I'm always getting 25 minutes to 4. But um, I'm sitting here indoors because the, uh, the veranda area is now closed off. It's only for the restaurant use, which is a bit of a nuisance because it used to be lovely sitting out in the, um, the wide open spaces with, um, you know, with the perfect views and the sunspot and stuff. But um, at the moment, um, I'm delighted just to be sitting here on the, uh, well, this is the road. It comes along, this is a turret road from Dalfrec Bridge just down there. And then it comes past. I can't turn my camera because there's a couple sitting in front of me now. But, um, thank you. Uh, so, from Dalfrec, you go from uh, uh, up to the, the Hosh 
um, Hosh farmhouse and then fork left for the Balvik. From the Balvik you would then uh, proceed all the way up to uh, through uh, Glen Tur The road's not terribly good for, for a big segment of it, but uh, when you reach the uh, top end you will be at uh, the reservoir, the Loch Turret Reservoir, which was gifted to the town of Creef uh, by the Murrays of Ochter Tile. And I previously mentioned that the, as a result of the, uh, the gift from the Murrays of the water, um, did I mention it? Perhaps I didn't know that. No, I didn't. Let me just uh, re re-educate you on this matter. Um, Scottish Water, who uh, have the uh, are the utility company in charge of uh, the water supply, well, they they charge the uh, customers for this uh, service, meaning the uh, for treatment of sewage and also for the water supply to reach the the tap at the sink. You see. And, um, but in, in all honesty, the lost turret should be free to the people of Creef because it was gifted to the people of Creef, as I say, by the Murrays of Ochter Tyre. And, um, and that was done at the, the back end of the 19th century. And as a result, the people of Creef all chipped together. They're very generous people in Creef because they've done that for uh, General Sir David Baird's monument back in the late 1820s, early, early 1830s, actually. But, um, so anyway, they all chip together and uh, as a result, you have the Murray Fountain, which is situated in the, the centre of Creef at uh, James's Square, or, or St James's Square, as it's properly known as. Um, it's named so much uh, after James Drummond, uh, uh, the Drummond Estates, of course, and uh, anyway. Um, so I, I, as you come along this road, either I'm pointing the camera up because I, I can't swing it around any further in the, in the restaurant. Um, you will just drive along here. Take care. Take care when you're driving along this road. It's rather, rather twisty in places. And as I say, you fork off left for the Balvik and Loch Turret. And if you keep going to the right, you will then uh, enter into Mani Estate. And it's a private road, actually. Mani, Mani Road is private. It's owned by the estate. They're responsible for all maintenance on that road. That's why you'll find it's uh, often, uh, you know, ungritted during the winter months. And it's, uh, the hedges are only trimmed back by the, uh, by the estate workers, uh, so to speak. So that's, that's the story. But uh, anyway, for, for the moment, I'm going to switch off. I got my coffee here. Um, coffee's been delightfully put down. But unfortunately, I'm not, it's not been a million coffees sold since the last time I was in about three hours ago. So um, the one I got earlier was the only one I'm going to get free. But I'll speak to you later. I think I'm going to pop round to Abba Turret. I'll explain why shortly at Abba Turret's house if I can get access. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that shortly, OK? Now, before I do forget, um, I'm sorry about all the cars that are parked up here. There's an additional car park, you see. But um, if you view your eyes over to the rear and you can see the steep banking, there's a, there's a pathway there. And that pathway is called the Lover's Walk. It's the Lover's Walk, which I've uh, walked uh, hand in hand fondly with many partners in my, in my day. Very beautiful walk along the, the river turret is just down below the cars, you see. And it's a very, very, well, I used to run it. it was, I used to run this. It was an extremely difficult cross country type run. I used to run from centre, well, my home to the, the home address in Creef, and then all the way out here and, and up over the knock and stuff like that. It was uh, amazing. But anyway, um, the Lovers Walker, somewhere along this, 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 this route, um, when I first met up in Dow, I said up in Dow, I said, Would you like to go for a picnic with me? And she said, no. I said, please, please, up and down, come, come and have a picnic with me. I know exact spots. It's, it's, it's absolutely lovely. I said, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Now, what I think I'll do, I think what we'll, if we'll zip around to Abba Turret after the coffee, see if we can get access to Abba Turret. And uh, if, if we're allowed in, I'll take some pictures. And then what I think we'll do is we'll walk along and I'll show you the spot where I was going to have a picnic with up and down um, many, many years ago. 
This is just a, a quick uh, glance of the uh, part of the gift shop. I'm not going in. It's a lovely part of Glen Turret. Uh, we sell all the whiskies and all the miniatures and stuff like that. It's absolutely wonderful. And also we have here's a very, very upmarket uh, design place with uh, jewellery and stuff like that. It's very nice indeed. And from here uh, we can go up to the restaurant, which is La Cosse, and also the was this a net? What's this place? Yes. Anyway. So this is uh, out towards the turret. Uh, this is the bridge over the turret, uh, and uh, these are some of the seats that we have uh, made available. But um, this is the, the veranda up here. What I was talking about, which is not uh, accessible any longer to the uh, coffee people, it's only for the the Michelin star La, La Cosse restaurant. Is it La Cosse they call it? I think it's called La Cosse. La Lique, it's not La Cosse, La Cosse, Andrew, it's La Lique restaurant. So there's private access only if you're in the five star La Lique restaurant. And this is Towers, I remember Towers. I remember the cat, Tarza. Absolutely wonderful cat. And his other one as well. There's another one used to cut it around, but I've not seen it for a long time. Don't know where it's gone. But there's uh, some of the, the whiskey bars and stuff there. So that's where they store the whiskey. Well, not in these ones, these are the empty ones. But it's all very lovely out here. It really is. It's absolutely smashing. But, uh, anyway, let's go and uh, we'll have a, a try at the um, Abba Turret. And if we're going to get into Abba Turret, we'll, uh, we'll cruise out to the um, uh, we'll cruise out to the uh, picnic area I was talking about.